Welcome to 5 Minute School. In today's video we're going to be talking about the renal blood supply. From the last video we know that the approximate weight of a kidney is around 160 grams so it doesn't seem like it's that much of a big organ but the kidneys do receive about 20% of the overall cardiac output. So I want to help you to understand this concept of renal blood supply. So we're going to start from the beginning and uh, we're going to first note the abdominal aorta is going to branch into the renal artery which you can see from the diagram here and the renal artery was what initially provides the kidneys with arterial blood so the renal artery supplies the arterial blood to the kidneys okay now the renal artery is then going to divide into the interlobar arteries and they pass between the pyramids through the renal columns so you can see here are the interlobar arteries and then when we reach the boundary of the cortex and medulla so we can say that this region here these interlobar arteries are going to branch into arcuate arteries okay so it's going to be at the boundary of the cortex and the medulla so we then have arcuate arteries here and then if we follow this one here it's going to pass forward and then it's going to branch into an interlobular artery and you can see a good example is this point here we have an interlobular artery which has initially branched from the arcuate artery here and then what's going to happen is these interlobular arteries are they going to are then going to divide further and branch into afferent arterioles and the afferent arterioles which you can't see from this image but i've got a diagram here explaining it further the afferent arterioles deliver the blood to the capillary beds otherwise known as glomeruli okay so now we've we've gone into this depth here the capillary bed which i've mentioned is this little region from which you can see here so this is the glomerulus and uh, we have the afferent arterial which is going to be providing blood to the glomerulus and then uh, we're going to have the blood filter which is formed which passes through these tubules of the kidneys here now the blood which is going to remain in this region here obviously it's not going to stay there it's going to go through this efferent arterial here and what this is going to do is deliver blood into another capillary bed or capillary network called the peritubular capillaries okay so we're gonna move back onto this point here in fact let's let's move on to this diagram because I think it would help you to understand it so here's the arcuate artery and then uh, it branches into the interlobular artery and then into the afferent arterial here which provides blood supply to the capillary bed or the glomerulus and then through the afferent arterial um, provides blood to the peritubular capillaries which you can see these regions here okay now the blood from the peritubular capillaries drain into the interlobular veins the arcuate veins and the interlobar veins so it's the exact same principle in terms of the arteries but now we're going to say veins so it's pretty much the same names but in reverse so the interlobar veins descend between the pyramids, converge and leave the kidneys as a single renal vein which empties into the inferior vena cava. And you can see from the diagram here, we can see an interlobar vein and then here is the renal vein which is where the blood will leave the kidney through the renal vein. Okay, so what makes this arrangement of blood vessels unique is in the body it's the only system where we have an initial capillary bed which is drained by an arterial and not by a venule okay and what actually happens is it gets drained by this arterial and then further along the line it gets drained into further capillaries here as well so that's what makes this renal blood supply system different to other organs in the body is that there's a second capillary bed which is located downstream these peritubular capillaries which the blood will drain into and then obviously it's drained back through the veins and then finally into the renal vein okay so that's everything i want to discuss in this video on the renal blood supply if you have any questions relating to any of these 
uh, anything that I've mentioned in this video, write a comment below and I'll do my best to respond to you as soon as possible.